Coral Princess is a Coral class cruise ship that entered service with Princess Cruises in early 2003. One of just two Coral class cruise ships, the other one being Island Princess, Coral Princess was designed as a new generation Princess cruise ship that is small enough to transit the original locks of the Panama Canal. With the retirement of the Sun class cruise ships in 2021, Coral Princess is now the baby of the Princess Cruises fleet, with a tonnage of just over 91,000 tons, making her slightly smaller than Island Princess. I recently cruised aboard Coral Princess as a guest of Princess Cruises. The trip gave me a great opportunity to learn about the ship and its facilities, to share this with you. So let's go aboard Coral Princess and see why this ship remains a firm favourite for many of her repeat guests 20 years after her launch. Hi, I'm Chris Frame. I write maritime history books and lecture aboard cruise ships about maritime history. I also make YouTube videos on the topics of maritime history and cruising. If that sounds like the sort of thing you're interested in, please feel free to subscribe. We'll start our tour of Coral Princess on Plaza Deck, the lowest entertainment deck aboard the ship. Here you'll find the guest services desk, where passengers can engage with Princess staff on all matters relating to the onboard experience, just like the front desk of a hotel. Plaza Deck is on the ground floor of the ship's central atrium, with a large staircase and glass elevators that dominate the central part of this room, and raise it up several decks to create a central meeting point across the main passenger areas. There's plenty of seating here thanks to the nearby Good Spirits Bar, as well as a shore excursion desk for those passengers wishing to book a shore tour in person, something that you can also do via the Princess Medallion app. Just forward of the atrium, the Bordeaux restaurant is one of the ship's two main dining rooms. A la carte menus are paired with friendly service and an open seating environment, offering a welcome, carefree dining experience. Take the glass elevators up one deck and Fiesta Deck provides a wide array of passenger experiences. Head to the aft end of the ship and you'll find the Universal Lounge. A split-level space, this lounge doubles as a show lounge, providing an alternative entertainment option to the larger Princess Theatre found at the forward end of the ship. The rest of Fiesta Deck is dedicated to passenger experiences, including a third lounge called Explorers. This area offers an intimate atmosphere with a small stage and plenty of seating as well as a drink service. A photo gallery links to the ship's casino complete with the International Café, which is a popular coffee shop serving all manner of milky drinks and light meals. Shops surround the atrium here, while at the forward end of the passenger deck you'll find the province dining room. Promenade deck is where you'll find Coral Princess's magnificent teak wood wraparound boat deck. The deck is wide and spacious, as well as being sheltered, so it offers passengers a wonderful, traditional maritime experience. The upper level of the Universal Lounge occupies the aft end of Promenade Deck, while at the forward end you'll find the expansive Princess Theatre. Complete with tiered seating, the Princess Theatre offers excellent sightlines and modern sound and lighting, and is home to the ship's main production shows. Bookended by show lounges, the rest of the deck is dedicated to passenger facilities. The Bayou Cafe is a key feature, with New Orleans inspired decor. The restaurant attracts an extra tariff, and offers a theme menu that includes lobster. Sabatini's Italian can be found on Promenade Deck as well. With an Italian-inspired menu, this experience also attracts a cover charge. Heading forward, past the Fine Arts Gallery, Pruner's Bar provides drinks to patrons on comfy seating near the atrium. The nearby Churchill's Lounge was once a cigar lounge, but has since been converted into a quiet nook with views over the boat deck and seemed popular with readers who wanted to take in a good book with views of the sea. The Wheelhouse Bar is probably my favourite room aboard Coral Princess. It is steeped in maritime history from the era of P&O Princess. Princess Cruises was acquired by P&O back in the 1970s and much of its early growth was thanks to P&O investment. And the Wheelhouse Bar is one of those seagoing treasure troves with models, paintings, posters and even a ship's bell. It also serves drinks and is a great spot for meeting friends. Next, we will move up to the Emerald Deck. But before we do, did you know that we have a tea mill merch store selling cruise clothing made from ethically sourced cotton? We have both summer and winter ranges available and every sale helps the channel. Emerald Deck is home to many passenger cabins with a medallion class smart entry system. In fact, all the cabins and staterooms on board Coral Princess are medallion enabled. There's also some passenger amenities here surrounding the atrium, including the card room and a very poorly stocked library. 
Princess Cruises, our books would be a great addition to help you boost the collection here. Hint, hint. Anyway, an internet cafe sits forward on the atrium, which is a bit of a throwback to 2002, as most passengers use their own devices on board. Coral Princess had very good internet speeds, the best I'd seen at sea recently, and coverage is of a good standard throughout the whole ship. Full marks to Princess Cruises here. The next few decks, Dolphin, Baja and Aloha, are mainly dedicated to passenger cabins. However, the Kids Club Zone and Sanctuary Pool are found at the aft end of Aloha Deck. Lido Deck sees another action-packed collection of amenities, starting with the Sanctuary, an adults-only zone at the aft end of the ship. Here you can escape the pace of the main passenger areas and relax in a quiet, private retreat. A well-stocked fitness centre links into the nearby beauty salon, which includes a thermal spa suite and saunas. This area leads through to the Lotus Pool, complete with hot tub jacuzzis. It is also accessible from the deck above, and has a glass magrodome that allows it to be used in all weather conditions. Around 100 metres or so forward of this, the Lido Pool offers an alternative swimming option. At the forward end of Lido Deck, you'll also find the Horizon Court, Princess Cruises Al Fresco Restaurant. This is a great place to grab a casual bite, with lots of options available. Sun Deck is a great place to take in the views, with a large open deck space. This is also home to the movies under the stars, thanks to a large screen just forward of the funnel. At the forward end of Sun Deck, the bar and grill offers casual bites including burgers, hot dogs and freshly made pizzas. And finally, on top of the ship, Sports Deck, the smallest aboard Coral Princess, provides a blend of relaxation and recreation with the intimate splash pool area at the forward end of the deck juxtaposed by the energetic sports centre at the aft, complete with basketball court. So that's our tour of Coral Princess. And I thought Coral Princess is a charming ship with lots of great public spaces on board. I thoroughly enjoyed my time on board and would rate the ship among my favourites in the Australian cruise market. Shortcomings, such as the understocked library, could be easily overcome, while delighters, such as the multiple show lounges, great dining options and spacious cabins, made for a highly enjoyable cruise. Thanks again to Princess Cruises for providing the opportunity to sail on board and share my experience with you, my YouTube subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button now and let me know what you think of Coral Princess in the comments below. Thanks once again for watching and until next time, I hope to see you on board.